In this video, we are going to discuss how to find out the area of irregular geometry, area bound by an irregular geometry. So this is the topic, what do I mean by irregular geometry and what do I mean by the regular geometry. When it is a circle, square, rectangle, rhombus, trapezoid and parallelogram, we have certain formulas to calculate the areas bound by those objects. However, if the geometry is irregular, I start with this geometry. How much is the area covered inside this closed curve? Then we have to use several techniques. This will be useful in cross section balancing and this will also be useful when we use cross section balancing to estimate the strain parameters. So here one of the approach can be that I think of the x and y coordinate axis, find out the equation and take this as 0, 0, take this b coordinate as x1, 0 and then we can basically the find out the area by integration from 0 to x1 and then fx dx. This is a standard process. However, it can be time taking in the case of geological problem solving, particularly when we are working with uh, paper and pen and the geometry box in the classroom for the structural geological problems. So this we understand is a process, but we need to see some other techniques of finding out the area. On this line AB and here I am considering, see these three are straight lines. In subsequent problems, we will see that none of these lines are straight. Okay, so now we write down this formula area is equal to the AB length multiplied by the average height. This average height, what is that? From AB, how much is the average height of this curve? How do we find that or make an equation? This average height h can be written as n plus 1 in the denominator and here sigma hi and i runs from 1 to n. What are hi? We have to keep on drawing So I have to draw vertical lines on AB and they are equidistant from each other. That means these small distances are equal. If I draw those lines in this manner, then that is incorrect. And each of these heights can be measured, say this is H1, this height is H2 and it goes up to the last one, say covering this one as hn all these heights can be measured with a scale and they will be summed up and suppose there are n number of lines that we have considered then divide by n plus 1 this can be called as the average height or the representative height so the area of this irregular object will be this it is an approximate formula but it is workable no doubt this was a situation when ab line was horizontal what will happen if there is no straight line in any of the boundaries of the irregular object. For example, take this geometry. Say this is the geometry and we want to apply the this kind of formula to find out the how much is the area. So here there can be more than one detailed way of doing. One of the ways will be I can draw a b line like this or like that, say I choose to draw like this and I call this as the AB line. Now what to do? At regular small interval, I will draw 
lines which are perpendicular to the AB line. In this way I keep on drawing and I come here and then I draw this one. Next I can divide the total area into an upper half above AB line and the lower half below the AB line. Does not mean the half of the area, upper portion and the lower portion. Next I take these heights as HI. Now I can write area 1, this is going to be my area 1 and this is going to be my area 2. Area 1 is equal to, we apply this formula, sigma HI divided by n plus 1. There are n number of lines, so I runs from 1 up to n. Similarly, I can take these lengths, I can keep on measuring and add up and I can find area 2 is equal to sigma hi divided by n plus 1. So what is capital H? These are all these distances from AB and downward direction. So the total area of area 1 and area 2 together will be given by is given by now further some more one more step can be taken take for example h1 and h1 they are basically the same line of the basically the line number 1. So, this is the small h1 and this is the capital H1. So, if I add up what will happen the total height I can write as if I add them up the total height can be written as h1 dash. So, in this way for, for each of these lines I keep on adding up the top length and the bottom length and I get So, what would be our ex appropriate step in the practical studies? We will draw these lines at equal interval and we will not measure this, this, this and this rather we will measure the total lengths and straight away apply this formula. By doing this we will find out the total area this and then multiply it by AB length. In this way this irregular geometry's area can be worked out. I repeat this will be good for structural geological practical exercises. Now I have an observation in the classroom that students, there are two extreme varieties of students. Suppose this is AB line, some are drawing lines which are very close to each other and equidistant. If you draw in this manner, you are wasting your time in the class. So this is not recommended. And there are another group of students who want to finish the work very fast. So they draw like this 1, 2 and 3 keeping big gap between them. So this is also not recommended. What is recommended? Logically to finish something within reasonable time is to maintain these distances not too small and not too big. But even between these two I can tell you if you apply this kind of large distance between the two between the vertical lines it will give you much incorrect result. More accurate results will come if you keep on drawing these lines equidistant and close to each other. But anyway, this is the expected process where within reasonable time we can finish the problem. Okay. Having said this, I will now bring into your notice another kind of area irregular geometry say this is a geometry a crescent geometry and I want to know how much is the area note that these are not parabolic shape these are rather curved lines that I have drawn arbitrarily by hand so you cannot say that the two parabolas are considered and by integration process uh, I will draw a line here this area will be found and that area will be found and subtraction will be made that is not going to work here. So what is the way? Here we define the AB line like this and 
at equal interval we keep on drawing vertical lines and it goes from here up to there. Say I have drawn in this way n number of lines that are equidistant to each other and are perpendicular to the AB line. Now what to do? I can think of the bigger area AB and this curve say that is the area A and here the smaller area say that is the area A. So, if we find the total area total one capital A and this is a small area A then capital A minus small a will give us this area. Now, how to do this? For the big area A, it is equal to AB length multiplied by I equal to 1 to n Hi divided by n plus 1. And for the smaller area A, it is equal to AB multiplied by H i. So, in all cases here in all cases for all lines for n number of lines what do we see that H i length is more than H i. When i is equal to 1 this is the total length of small h i and the capital h i is this much. Okay. So, now the area within this dotted region is given by a minus a that is the area we want to find out will be given by a b multiplied by and here this term minus that term. Let me write that as it is Now, what are these lengths basically? Let us take H1, let us say line 1, consider it. This is small h1 and minus capital H1 will be, will be given by this much of length, this much of length. Then for line 2, this is small h2 and this is capital H2. So, their subtraction will give me this much of length. So, let us say these heights I call them as h i dash. So, here what do I get? This area is given by a b length multiplied by sigma h i dash i runs from 1 to n and then divided by n plus 1. So, in this way this irregular geometry can also be calculated. Now, how I am choosing a b line this can vary from person to person. Let me show you how the a b line can be chosen differently yet the same result can be obtained just to give one example. Consider this is an irregular geometry. and I can choose the AB line like this. Then in that case AB line is not horizontal. Therefore, the lines that are perpendicular to the AB line will not be vertical either. Nevertheless, I can draw lines which are perpendicular to AB and equidistant on the AB line in this way etcetera and up to here, here 
and then I am getting the small h1 distance and the capital H1 distance, small h2 distance and the capital H2 distance. So, I can find out this area, that area and sum up there will be a formula which I have shown already that this length together is to be measured, this length is to be measured, this length is to be measured and apply the formula. Now, suppose someone thinks that I will use another line a b in that case say he considers this is the line a b in that case our perpendicular lines to a b will go like this etc and it will go up to here so then also we find out the area so in this way the a b lines position may change but what we have to find out is a position of a b line whereby the calculation can be done in a fastest possible way. Now, let us look at the formula that I wrote first and try to understand it in more detail. What will happen if we take a rectangle and let us say this length is a unit and this length is p unit. The area of the rectangle is a b square unit. Now, if I apply that approximate formula, then what I have to do? I have to draw lines which are equidistant on the a side and which are perpendicular to it. In this way, I will keep on drawing up to here. Now, a question comes, should I count this as the first line? or should I count this as the first line? Which one is the first line to count? I mean to say, suppose there were suppose there were 15 yellow lines inside which I have drawn or suppose suppose there are q number of yellow lines then n will be q or n is q plus 2. Why plus 2? Because this white line if I add up in my calculation and if I take this line and add up in my calculation instead of q it will be q plus 2. So, if n is equal to q the formula of the area will go like this. q plus 1 and sum h i, i goes from 1 to q and if n is equal to q plus 2, then the area will be given by q plus 3 and here and multiplied by the a length here important and multiplied by the a length here which is which must not be missed. And i goes from 1 to q plus 2. So, which one should I take? Is this an accurate area calculation or is this an accurate area calculation? So, on this I will request the viewer to draw a rectangle with taking a as say 10 centimeter and b as say 6 centimeter. So, that means the area a b is given by 60 square centimeter it is known. Now, apply these two processes and see which one comes close to 60 centimeter square. The one that comes will be considered and this principle what we understand will be then transported to such area calculations whether to count this as a line starting line whether to count this or one more thing can be done. We can think of a third possibility that 
that the area will be calculated when q equal to when n the total number of line is taken as q plus 1 why that means I have considered this white line but then I have avoided that line all possibilities we are thinking so in that case area will be given by sigma h i divided by q plus 2 and this runs from i goes from 1 to q plus 1 this one this one and that one here i have to write multiplication multiplied by the area the length a which is over here so these three can be applied on 60 square centimeter which one goes closer and we take that one as a formula which we will be using in cross section balancing and also hence from there to find out the strain parameters.